Well, good evening, my brothers and sisters. Welcome again to another Bible study at Fourth Baptist Church. We're glad to have you with us tonight, and we're grateful and thankful unto the Lord uh, for your presence and for allowing us to come together and share in his word. So we appreciate your being with us tonight, and we give God the praise, the honor, and the glory for all the wonderful things that he has done in our lives. Ivy Bond, we are so grateful to you for being with us. Jennifer Goodman Hayes, Deaconess Jennifer Goodman Hayes, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. <clears throat> to God be the glory. Leonelli May, my God, uh, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Nina Dunstan, praise God for your presence. Deacon Mike White, we thank God for you. My brother, you are a blessing uh, to the ministry uh, of Fourth Baptist Church as well as a, a blessing unto the Lord. Onita Allen, thank you for sharing with us. Jeanette Shoemate, we praise God for your presence. Connie Baltimore, thank God that you're with us tonight. And we've been praying and lifting up uh, your sister in prayer. And we pray that all things are well. Deborah Grimes, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight as well. Brenda Carter, thank you and welcome to our Bible study. And uh, we just lift up the name of Jesus. So thank you all for sharing with us tonight. We are excited and we are pleased and thrilled with what the Lord is doing. Barbarone, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. As we always do, uh, Danye uh, Richardson, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight as well. Van Parker, we praise God for your presence along with your wife. And we trust and we pray that all things are well uh, with you. Amen. Pat Parker, I, I figured you'd be on with your husband, so thank God for sharing with us on this evening. Amen. As always, uh, we never want to start anything without a word of prayer. So let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Eternal God, our Father, as we come now before your presence, we are so grateful and so thankful that you've privileged us with another day. You've blessed us with another day and blessed us with another opportunity to study and glean from thy word. Bless our worship together tonight and our study tonight. Allow it, dear God, to be uh, inspirational. Allow it to be instructional. And allow us to receive, dear God, that which may develop us into mature Christians. Bless our efforts. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Deacon John Bridgeford, we praise God for your presence. Sister Valerie Franklin, <coughs> thank the Lord for being with us tonight. Bridget Henderson, thank, praise God for your presence tonight. Deacon Forrest Robinson, Jr., thank God that you're with us tonight. We praise God for you. Amen. Nina Dunstan, uh, again, thank you so much. Nan, thank you for sharing with us tonight. To God be the glory. We are excited tonight. We are so excited. Uh, Big West, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. A lot of uh, uh, information we want to share with you tonight before we get started with Bible study. Amen. Don't forget Marvin Harris. Thank you for sharing with us. Don't forget our van is back in, in action. And uh, our van riders, if you desire to be picked up and carried back to uh, home from church, please let us know and we will pick you up. Deacon Kenny Scroll, thank you so much for sharing with us. Don't forget to uh, continue praying. Uh, those of you in uh, the city of Portsmouth, continue praying for our uh, city leaders and uh, pray much uh, for our uh, state of Virginia. Pray uh, that God will have his way. If ever there is a time for the city of Portsmouth to be in prayer, it is now. Amen. We'll talk a little bit more about that a little later on. Amen. But pray uh, for the city of Portsmouth and pray for all of the leaders uh, that are here in the city of Portsmouth. I want you to continue to uh, pray for the families uh, that lost loved ones in Texas. Amen. 21 people uh, murdered, and we want you to pray much for that family and those individuals there. Reverend Peggy Goulet, thank you for sharing with us. Uh, Karen Yunkers, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us uh, tonight as well. Birthday time. We want to uh, wish a happy birthday to my goddaughter, Franchon Howell, who will be uh, celebrating her birthday on Friday. I want to uh, wish happy birthday to Sister Mabry, who will be celebrating her birthday on tomorrow. Amen. 
want to uh, wish a happy birthday uh, to my nephew, uh, Teron Dozier, who will be celebrating his birthday tomorrow as well. And drum roll. <laughs> happy birthday to my grandson, Kai Smith, who celebrates his birthday today. Amen. Uh, he turned 18 on today. And we want to wish him a very, very happy, happy birthday. Valerie Dozier, thank you for sharing with us on this evening. Amen. Don't forget our Let's Chat ministry. We'll have another session of Let's Chat on June the 3rd at 7 p.m. Deaconess Danielle Beeman will be posting information for uh, you to join in with us. This is a Zoom meeting. Uh, Deaconess uh, Maude Hall, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. To God be the glory. Uh, uh, not only that, uh, but uh, our counseling ministry is alive and well. And we want you to uh, call our number, 757-412-9219, and uh, set, arrange a counseling uh, uh, session if you so desire to do that. Our youth Bible studies every Thursday uh, at 7 p.m., and we want you to join in with us uh, uh, for our youth Bible study. Reverend Hazon Dixon, along with his wife, have already posted the Zoom information. Uh, all you need to do is to just get that information, write it down, and give us a call. Join in on tomorrow night. Juliet Williams, praise God for your presence. Uh, uh, Roy Coppage, we thank God uh, for your presence tonight as well. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I want you to continue to pray for our brothers and our sisters. Uh, this coming uh, Saturday at 11 a.m., uh, we will observe the homegoing services for Sister Brenda Hickson. Amen. Darlene uh, Hines Saunders, thank you for sharing with us. Richard Kanchler, thank you for sharing with us. Sister Hick Hickson's funeral will be this coming Saturday at Fourth Baptist Church at 11 a.m. We're asking uh, that we would have ushers available that we might serve the family. Deacon William Hayes Jr., thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Continue to pray for the Mosley family. Uh, Sister Garnetta Mosley, continue to pray for them uh, as they deal with the loss of a five-year-old nephew. And we're just going to continue to lift them up that God will give them strength uh, along the way. Amen. To God be the glory. Don't forget, Tanisha Smith, thank you for sharing with us tonight. Don't forget our men's ministry uh, will be sponsoring a fishing trip on June the 25th at 8 a.m. in the morning at the Dockside Fishing Center. And we're asking all the brothers, all the men to share and to join in with us on June the 25th uh, for a fishing extravaganza. And we ask that you would call Deacon John Day and let him know uh, that you will be joining with us. Amen. To God be the glory. I want you to continue to pray now, my brothers and sisters, uh, for everyone, especially for members of our church. I want you to pray for the Monday family. I want you to pray for Sister Delmo Locus. Uh, Brother Aldrich Monday. I want you to pray for the Monday family. Uh, uh, their sister uh, and their daughter, uh, Felicia Monday, went home to be with the Lord on today. Amen. We're not, uh, uh, we don't know all the arrangements just yet, but as soon as we know, we will let you know what the arrangements are. Amen. And pray for her son, Antonio Monday. Amen. Lift him up in your prayers. Amen. Her only son, uh, Antonio Monday. So we're asking that Fourth Baptist, along with all of our friends and our prayer warriors, and if you know how to send up a prayer, we ask that you would pray for the Monday Locust family today. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you so much for all that you continue to do and all that you've done uh, in order that we might continue to be uh, the individuals that God is looking for in these last and evil days. Don't forget our grief ministry is still alive and well, and we ask that you would just join in uh, with them. You can reach them and join in by calling this number, 757-708-0770, and Reverend Peggy Goulet, along with her staff, will be more than happy and willing to pray with you, to sit with you, to talk with you, uh, to assist you uh, along the way. Not only that, but our prayer line uh, is available every Monday, I'm sorry, every Wednesday uh, from seven, from 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. and every Sunday from 9.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. You can reach us on our prayer line by calling this number and entering this access code. Amen. 
1-800-807-9605. Amen. And our access code is 985-155. Let me give you that prayer line number one more time. 267-807-9605 with access code 985-155. Amen. So my brothers and sisters continue uh, to pray much for our brothers and sisters who are going through. Susie Austin, thank you for sharing with us. Dolores George, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. I want you to continue to lift up our prayer list today. Uh, Brother Calvin Freeman, uh, Sister Charlene Thomas, Deaconess Dorothy Riddick, uh, uh, Dolores George, uh, Donnell Beeman, Herbert Hall, Imogene Weaver McCain, Mabel Simmons, Letitia uh, Reed, uh, Anthony Toppins, William Smith, Ronald Jones, Sanjay Claude, uh, Destiny Sabril, Deborah Grimes, Dorothy Spruill, Katie Coppage, Lloyd Saunders, Darlene Saunders, Michelle Springs, uh, Chandra Shambly, uh, Martha Moss, Reverend Florence Pinder, Xavier Orton, Beverly Shelton and Family, Betty Smith, Richard Smith, Jeanette Shoemake, Jen Weaver, Lucretia White and her father, Bertha Mitchell, Louise Bowser, Anita Allen, Reverend and Mrs. Clyde Doxson, Reverend Frieda Thomas, uh, Thomas and Francie Hasty, uh, the Council family and the Todd family. Amen. Continue, my brothers and sisters, to lift them up in your prayers. Amen. Trustee Melinda uh, Fox, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight, and we appreciate it. Uh, Sister Irma Scales, we pray, praise God for your presence tonight as well. Well, with all of that said and done, it's time for us now to jump into this lesson for the night, which I think is a very good lesson. Amen. Before I do that, I forgot. Pray much for our city, the city of Portsmouth. If ever there was a time that we need prayer in our city and the leadership of our city, it is now. After that horrendous uh, uh, city uh, council meeting last night, uh, there's not much for anyone to say other than to Ask the Lord to have his way. Amen. Uh, for uh, Felicia uh, Gray, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Amen. But pray for our city leaders, our mayor, our city council, our school board, wh wh whatever it may leadership position in our church, in our city, we need your prayers right now. Amen. I'm going to leave that alone because I get wrapped up and, and get frustrated over some of the things that have been going down in our city. So I'm going to leave that right where it is. And those that are responsible, we're asking God that God will uh, 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 touch their hearts. Amen. And allow them to see uh, what's going on and the error of their ways. Amen. Uh, Nicole Williams, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. We praise God for uh, your presence. Tonight's lesson is found in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 12. And we're going to be looking at verse 1 through 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 10. Amen. And our lesson title is Paul's Thorn in the Flesh. Paul's Thorn in the Flesh. The Apostle Paul continues uh, his defense of his apostleship. He continues to understand uh, that there are many Christians, that there are many uh, so-called believers in Corinth that don't understand him or his call or his anointing. They don't understand what God has been doing through his life, and they have basically rejected him. Amen. They looked at the outside for outward facade, and they saw his 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 his, his uh, looks were not uh, uh, pleasing unto them. Uh, Paul was not a handsome young man, so they judged things. Uh, by the outward appearance rather than the content of his heart. So they rejected him. But here's the other thing about it, and this is why Paul writes this lesson tonight, before us tonight. There were many of those who were supposed to be religious leaders during that time. There were many who were supposed to have been prophets and all of that. Amen. Brenda Carter, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So here's what it was. Uh, all of those religious leaders, notice I use that word religious. Amen. I did not use the word Christian because there is a difference. Amen. These individuals 
were practicing uh, their positional uh, achievements. Amen. They had some way, somehow, gotten in a position to be uh, titled a prophet or titled a, a, a minister or titled uh, some type of priest or whatever. Amen. And there are many of those today uh, that have never received a call from the Lord, never been touched by the Lord, never been anointed nor appointed by the Lord, but yet they find themselves in a position uh, that people will honor and think that, hey, they have something uh, uh, more extravagant and more meaningful because of their position or their title. So Paul is dealing with exactly that tonight in our lesson. Amen. These men love to go around boasting upon themselves, about themselves. Uh, they would boast that they would have visions and they would have dreams and uh, they were prophesying and that they were talking to the Lord and the Lord was uh, talking unto them when, in fact, it was not happening. Amen. So therefore, because Paul did not boast on himself, and you'll understand it as we go through the lesson, Paul did not boast upon himself, but Paul humbled himself. Amen. And allowed his, his actions and, and the Lord's uh, Holy Spirit leading him speak for itself. So Paul now gives an explanation tonight and gives an example tonight to those who think uh, that uh, they have this extra uh, uh, touch from the Lord or extra uh, anointing from the Lord that makes them more uh, uh, powerful uh, spiritually than anybody else. Amen. I also say this. If you are or if you have been anointed and appointed by the Lord, and, and if the Lord is leading and God, you don't have to boast about it. You don't have to tell anybody. Just do what the Lord tells you to do. Say what the Lord says for you to say. Act like the Lord wants you to act, and it will speak for itself. Amen. If you've got to tell everybody every time that you see them uh, that you are a preacher, that you are a pastor, that you are a deacon, or you are some spiritual individual, then ours are uh, that uh, you are not. Amen. Because if you got to continue to tell somebody, that means that they don't see it in you. You're trying to force it out there so that they may see it. And you're just dealing with the title that has been laid on you. Amen. I know, I know, I know. I'm in hot water with preachers now, but can I let you know, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is on the Lord's side. Amen, somebody. There are a lot of uh, uh, wolves dressed up in sheep's clothing. And, and and you've got to allow the Holy Spirit to give you that spirit of discernment that he will reveal to you those that are truthful, those who are spiritual, those who have been anointed and appointed, and those who have not. Amen. So Paul talks to us in our lesson tonight, and he comes to us tonight and he gives an example of what he is trying to teach and say to the Corinthians uh, uh, individuals at Corinth. Paul says it this way. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. He says, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. So Paul says that, wait a minute, it's not about me. He says, I, I, I don't have to boast about myself. He said, but the Lord gives me visions and the Lord will give me what? Uh, uh, revelations. And they are from the Lord. But I'm not going to boast about what the Lord and how the Lord is dealing with me. Amen. I, I'm not going to boast about uh, how the Lord is using me. That's what Paul is saying. I'm not going to brag about those type of things like some were doing in Corinth. They love to brag about themselves. They love to puff themselves up. They love to walk around with, uh, with pomp and circumstance. And they love to do all of that kind of stuff so that people will think they are more than what they are. Amen. Thank you, Trustee uh, Emmanuel, for sharing with us on this evening. So Paul says that I'm going to come and I'm not going to, I'm going to receive revelations and I'm going to receive visions. I've already done it. Amen. I've already received those things. But let me give you an example. So here it is. Verse number two, Paul says, I know a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Amen. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Amen. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. Man, that's a whole lot said right there. Uh, Betty Smith, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Now, Paul was saying to those individuals, 
that he is not what some of those individuals present themselves to be, a super apostle. Amen. Look, look, titles don't mean nothing with God. A man only boasts upon titles. And that's what gets us in trouble with God. Because then we think that we know more than God. We think that we are more uh, powerful than God. And that, and that we can outthink and outdo God. So we lay on all of these titles on ourselves. Amen, somebody. And I'm not going to get uh, wrapped around these titles that we all, all have and we've heard in our society today. Creston James, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Paul says, I'm not one of those uh, super apostles that is in your presence. Uh, I, I don't claim to have any uh, extraordinary, spectacular uh, 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 spiritual experiences such as they say that they have. Amen. Have you ever noticed that somebody always trying to present themselves with a whole lot of other stuff that other people don't have? Linda Richardson, thank you so much, sis, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. And, and some people always want to say, well, I've got a special anointing. I can lay hands and slay you in the spirit. I, I can speak in tongues. Listen, those are gifts, y'all. Amen. Speaking in tongues is no more than a gift. Yes, uh, but the Bible also gives us clarification uh, as to what should happen when you speak in tongues. That's another lesson for another time. Amen, somebody. But nonetheless, Paul says, Look, I, I'm, I'm not going to boast about myself like they boast about themselves. So therefore, I'm going to tell you from my experience as to what the Lord and how the Lord has been dealing with him. So Paul simply says, uh, in this thing, he says, it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. Paul is tired of writing uh, about himself. He would rather uh, write about Jesus Christ. But the worldly thinking which made the Corinthian Christians think little of Paul uh, was also making them think little of Jesus. So therefore, Paul wanted to lift up the name of Jesus and present uh, the, the, the word of God before them. He says that I'm going to come with visions and, and I'm going to come with revelations. Whether they were received from angels, whether it was Jesus himself or whether God spoke directly to him. Uh, Paul says, I have received from heaven these visions and uh, these uh, uh, revelations from the Lord. They're not my revelation. They're not my vision. They came from the Lord. There's always uh, limited uh, uh, to one receiving uh, uh, the visions and the revelations. They're always talking about, it's me that's got this, and uh, nobody else has received this special anointing from God. Amen. So be mindful of the people always talking about they are more uh, gifted spiritually than anybody else. Amen. Uh, my, my brothers and sisters, what, here's what we should be doing. We should be cautious. When someone reports a vision or a revelation, that they have regarding you. Amen. If somebody tells you that the Lord uh, told me to, to tell this and, and the Lord revealed this to me about you, amen, be mindful because here it is, my brothers and sisters. If the Lord has called you and the Lord has appointed you and the Lord has anointed you, don't you think the Lord's going to tell you as well? Amen. Now, he may tell other folks and they may see it, but if the Lord has not spoken to you, be mindful of that individual. Amen. To God be the glory. Glory boom. Thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. So now Paul gives an example. He says, I know a man in Christ. Uh, Paul describes this uh, experience that he had. Uh, Deborah Rhymes, thank you. Uh, he describes this experience that he had in the third person instead of the first person. Paul says, I myself had this experience. That's first person. But he says, I know a man. Uh, that had this experience. Now, we know from Bible study and studying the Word of God, Paul really is talking about himself. But the way that he phrases this is to present it in such a way that uh, uh, the Christian at Corinth would not think that he is boasting about himself. Amen. This has made us some wonder uh, if Paul is really speaking about himself or not, but if he is speaking about somebody else. But because he transitions into the first person, when we get down to verse 7, amen, we may assure ourselves that Paul is really talking about himself. Because Paul, in describing uh, this uh, remarkable spiritual experience, 
uh, is describing just the kind of thing that the super apostles uh, were bragging about uh, for themselves. So therefore, when he described his humble uh, experiences in this book, uh, he did not hesitate to write in the first person. So Paul is not glorying about this. Now, here's the other thing. Paul waited 14 years to say anything about this experience. 14 years. Paul waited 14 years to share this experience. So therefore, Paul did not want to go around bragging and boasting. Paul just simply held it uh, within himself and, and just gloried in the experience that God has given unto him. So therefore, Paul simply says, I, I, I went through this 14 years ago. And he says, now, I was in uh, this transitory uh, uh, moment, and I don't know whether I was in my body, or I don't know whether I was out of my body. I don't know whether the angels came down or the spirit came down and, 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 and took over uh, my body, or whether they released my, my mind and my soul and, all, and carried it up to heaven where they are and showed me these wonderful things that is too marvelous to speak about. Paul said, I don't know. Okay, now, here's the thing. There have been a lot of suggestions about what Paul really meant with this. But if the Bible does not clearly define and defend, then we should not uh, uh, superimpose our understanding upon this. All we need to know is that Paul is saying that he had an experience with the Lord. Amen. Whether it was in heaven or whether he was on earth, we don't know, Paul says, I cannot tell. If Paul could not decide for himself what that experience was in heaven uh, with the Lord, it would be crazy for us to attempt to explain it ourselves. Amen. No one can explain to you better about what has happened to you than you. You know what you had to deal with. You know what you went through. You know with uh, how the Lord is using you. You know when the Lord is speaking to you. You know all of that better than anybody else. So here it is. Paul says, I can't tell. And because he says that he can't tell, we need to leave it alone. Is, is that all right? Estelle Brown, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. So Paul says that such a one himself was caught up in the third heaven. Now, the third heaven uh, does not suggest that there are different uh, uh, levels in heaven, uh, you know, really, but Paul is using terminology uh, common to that day, which referred to the blue sky uh, as the first heaven, the starry sky as the second heaven, and the third heaven is where uh, the Lord lives, uh, where God lives himself. So Paul says that, that he was caught up in the spirit and taken to the third heaven, or it came down to him. We're going to leave that right there. Amen. Uh, we know. Uh, that the first heaven is basically uh, uh, above the in, in the clouds. Uh, the second one is where the stars, the moon, and uh, the celestial bodies are. And then the third heaven is where God's abode is, where God abides and where God lives. All right? So we know that. So Paul says that, hey, listen, I had this out-of-body experience. I don't know whether it was here on earth or whether it was in heaven, but I do know I had that experience. And Paul says, while I was there and while I was sequestered uh, by this spirit, he said, I heard some things which is not lawful for a man to other. So in describing this vision, this heavenly vision, Paul doesn't relate anything he saw and uh, only a shadowy description of what he heard. He does not tell us what was said to him. He does not tell us what he saw. Amen. So I'm not going to try to suggest or tell you what Paul heard or what Paul saw. Amen. Where the word of God, again, where the word of God keeps silent, then we ought to keep silent until the Lord reveals it to us uh, through the Holy Spirit. Amen, somebody. Watch out for all these super geniuses out here that knows every phrase, every biblical uh, 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 scripture uh, and can explain every last one of them in detail. You cannot do it in detail. There are some things that God just did not reveal to us in full understanding and full content. Amen. So be, be careful when everybody knows more about what the Lord wants you to do than you know what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. 
Paul says, I was caught up. I had this experience of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except in the infirmities. Paul says that, hey, whatever, whoever it was, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you about it, but I'm not going to boast about my own personal experiences. Paul is sharply and uh, humorously uh, contrasting himself with the super apostles among the Christians at Corinth. In other words, he says, that's what y'all want to do. That's what y'all do. He said, but I'm not going to do the same thing uh, that you all do. Amen. Paul is not one of those persons that says, monkey see, monkey do. Paul is not one of those persons that follows uh, 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 rather than leads. Uh, amen. You know, a lot of times people can be bought. Amen, somebody. People can be bought to, to do some things, to support some things, uh, to, to accomplish some things simply by the love of money. Amen. Don't be one of those persons that loves the, the world and the, the ways of the world and money and all that more than you love the will of God and the way of God. Amen. How many of you know that if you need money, God said he will provide it for you. He will supply. If you need food, God will provide it. He will supply. If you need health, if you need healing, whatever you need from God, he said, but I will supply all your needs uh, through Christ Jesus. Amen. He will do it. All we got to do is trust him and have faith in him. Amen. Don't let the mighty dollar cause you to sin. Don't, don't let the, uh, the, the mighty desire for power and position to cause you to sin. Amen. Don't be one of those persons that can be bought for friendship or by friendship. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. You see, when you do that, your troubles are just beginning. Amen. And though if you do it one time, you might as well get prepared. You're going to have to do it again. It's like telling a lie. Every time you tell a lie, if you don't remember what you said the first time, amen, the second time will be different and people will know that you're lying. Amen. You got to remember the lie that you told from the very beginning. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Sometimes we think that only people with uh, profound experiences with God are those who boast about uh, them constantly. Amen. But that's not the case. Paul says he never did that. He never will do that. But he certainly had profound experiences with God. You and I uh, had experiences with God. But we don't go around bragging and telling everybody about it. We just allow the Lord to give us opportunity to share at the right time, the right moment, with the right situation and the right person, our experiences with the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. So Paul felt that it was important to mention this experience, but not to dwell on it in any way. He was trying to uh, sell. He was not trying to sell himself to the uh, Christians at Corinth. He didn't have to do it. He was already sold out to the Lord, and the Lord had already blessed them. So, what else do you need? How many of you know that one with the Lord is a majority? Amen. Just you and the Lord can defeat any enemy. Hey, God can do it by Himself. Amen. But what I'm trying to say is trust in the Lord. Amen. And lean not to thine own understanding, and he will direct your path. You don't have to depend on anybody else. Amen, somebody. We got a mess in the city of Portsmouth right now. And all we got to do is follow the Lord, trust the Lord, and the Lord will reveal, the Lord will accomplish, the Lord will give us success, the Lord will bless. Amen, somebody. I'm going to leave that alone because I don't want to get wrapped up uh, in that type of thing. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Paul was given this vision. He was given it uh, for you and for me. So we would benefit from what the Lord showed Paul. Secondly, he was given it because what God told him through the vision sustained him through all the trials of his ministry and enabled Paul to give everything God wanted him to give to all generations. This vision helped Paul finish his course. And when God speaks to you, it will help you to finish your course. So then Paul comes along and he begins to talk to us in terms of uh, verse number three. And I knew of such a man, whether it be in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. We just talked about that. How that he was caught up in the paradise and heard unspeakable words, 
which it is not lawful for a man to utter. We just talked about Paul being caught up in, in the third heaven. Of such a one I will glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. Paul says, if anything, I'm going to glory with uh, my infirmities and what the Lord and how the Lord has dealt with me, sustained me, blessed me in the midst of my troubles and my infirmities. Let's look at verse 6. For though I would desire to glory, I will not be a fool, for I will uh, say the truth. Uh, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above uh, that which he should uh, seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. Paul says that uh, I'm not going to give you cause, I'm not going to give you reason to uh, think that I'm more than what I am. Amen. But it's sort of like what Philip Wilson used to say uh, uh, years ago. What you see is what you get. Amen. To God be the glory. So verse number seven says this, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above myself. Listen what Paul says. Paul's vision was so impressive. It was so great that it would have been easy for Paul to exalt himself, lift up himself. Amen. But Paul says, I'm not going to do that. He could have gloried in himself and caused others to glory in him because of this experience. But Paul says, that's not the way to do it. Deacon McNeil, thank you so much for sharing with us on tonight. From, to prevent himself from being exalted above measure, Paul was given something, a thorn in the flesh. It was given unto him by God. And this, Paul reveals the reason for telling of his heavenly vision, not to glorify himself, but to explain the thorn in the flesh. Now, my brothers and sisters, notice what that text says. It does not say that God punished Paul. It, it, it does not say that, that, that God uh, uh, was angry with Paul. But it says that Paul was given, amen, that this thorn of the flesh came from God, amen. So Paul was, 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 was talking about what the Lord has done, and the reason being that God wanted him to remain humble. His heavenly vision was a secret until now, but everyone saw uh, what he was talking about. They saw this thorn. That's all they had to do is look at him, and they could tell what that thorn was. Now, for us, the Bible does not tell, and Paul does not say, what that thorn in the flesh was. Amen. There have been some super scholars who tried to say that Paul had a big nose. Paul uh, looked like a dwarf. Uh, Paul was humpbacked and uh, small in feature. All of those things uh, that pe people have tried to explain uh, Paul's appearance. But the Bible does not really tell us what that thorn in the flesh was. All we know is Paul says that the Lord gave it to him. Amen. The Lord gave it to him. Amen. You didn't, you didn't hear what I say. It was given to Paul by the Lord. It was not a, a punishment, an act of punishment, or anything like that, but it was given unto Paul. He does not say, there was afflicted upon me a thorn in the flesh, but this was what? Given unto me. He does not say that God inflicted him, that God was punishing him. He says, the Lord gave it to me. Amen. And here's the reason why that thorn in the flesh, because Paul says that God wanted him to remain humble and God wanted him to remember, amen, what he had encountered in life, uh, how he had endured, how the Lord had blessed him and where the Lord had brought him from. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we can, uh, God can do so much for us. God can bless us. God can heal us. God can deliver us. Uh, God, God can anoint us and appoint us give us uh, extra strength and uh, abilities that, uh, that are not our own, and we get beside ourselves, and all of a sudden, we think that we are more than what we are. Amen, somebody. How many times have you met somebody that always boasting and bragging about how great they are? Amen. And what they are, uh, have been given the ability to do. How, how many have you seen preachers and, and teachers and and, 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 and different individuals that are always claiming special anointing from God. Amen. Reverend Brainard Green, thank you, my friend, for sharing with us tonight. 
And he may, so, so God gave this irritation to Paul, whatever it may have been. He gave it to Paul to keep him humble, to keep him focused, and remind him of just what the Lord had done and how the Lord was leading him along the way. Trustee Apicina, thank you so much for sharing with us on tonight. So can I say to you, my brothers and sisters, you may have been given a thorn in the flesh by the Lord. I don't know what it may be. I don't know where it came from and why the Lord is giving it to you. Perhaps the Lord is trying to tell you as well as myself that I, I, I've done this so that it will be an irritant to you and it will be a constant reminder to you of just how good I have been with you for you and with you, how I have blessed you, and how I am keeping and sustaining you along the way. Amen. It's sort of like an individual getting sick, and then uh, the Lord comes in, and, and they recover a little bit, but they don't have a complete recovery. And, 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 and every so often, that thorn or that illness raises up, uh, rises its ugly head, and rears its ugly head, and you feel the irritation you feel the uncomfortableness, and that is God's way of getting your attention. Say, calm down, come back down to earth. Earth to Charlie, come back down. Amen. Earth to Charlie, you need to come back down. You, you're too high right now. You too, have too high opinion of yourself. Come back down. Uh, you put your name there. And what God is simply saying is you need to humble yourself, and you need to bring yourself back down uh, to where you really are. Don't think more of yourself than you ought to think. That's what the Paul is saying in this text. A thorn in the flesh was given unto me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. In a strange way, this thorn was given to Paul, ultimately by, given by God, but it was also a messenger from Satan. Amen. A messenger of Satan. Satan probably uh, meant for it uh, to destroy Paul, to, to hinder him, uh, to uh, uh Make it seem like the Paul is not being used of God. Amen. But it turned out that God allowed this thorn of the flesh to come upon Paul because Satan wanted to destroy him. Satan wanted to stop his progress, his spiritual maturity, his spiritual growth. Amen. This is Satan's way of keeping us from focusing on uh, uh, the power of the Lord. Amen. So, but can I let you know one thing? <clears throat> Don't you ever forget that Satan may have some power, but God has all power. Amen. And it's the final say so comes from God. Satan may want to do a lot of things, but if God says no to Satan, don't touch him, don't touch her, don't do this, don't do that, Satan has no authority to do it. Amen. But here's the thing. If God allows that thorn in the flesh to come upon you, then please know that God has the ability and God has the power to sustain you in the midst of it as well as to uh, eradicate that whole situation. What God is simply doing is teaching us how to humble ourselves and to never forget what he has done for us. I don't know what you may have to deal with. Uh, I don't know what you're dealing with right now. Amen. Amen. I don't know what you're going through right now. I, I don't know what pains you right now. Amen. But can I let you know God knows and God will supply all of your need. He will supply everything that you need in order for you to uh, be successful and for him to sustain you in the midst of it. Amen. Jeanette Richardson, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. God will sustain you. Amen. But here's what God wants you to do. And this is why God, God wants us to turn our focus away from the world. Amen. And turn our focus on him. He will keep the imperfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. I know I'm right about that. I believe I got some folk out there listening to me tonight that have full confidence and have experienced uh, the, uh, the power of God in their life. They're not healed yet. They haven't been delivered yet, but they know that if it had not been for the Lord on their side, where would they be right now? If it had not been for the Lord's anointing and the Lord healing, amen, you would have given up long time ago. But because you believe and trust 
in the power of, of, of God and the anointing of God and the Holy Spirit uh, uh, regulating and moving and, and accomplishing the will of God, you have been sustained by God and God continues to strengthen you. Amen, somebody. Somebody needs to go back and remember when you were down uh, on your back. Amen. And, and the doctor was saying, we don't know what we're going to do. Amen. Uh, you had uh, a cancer. You had tumors in your, in your, in your head. You, all of those things were happening to you, and you didn't know what was going through. Can I tell you, it was God that was keeping you, and God used that experience to allow you to get closer to him, to depend more and more on him, and have greater confidence in him, and mature your faith and your trust in him. Amen. So Paul is simply trying to teach us in this lesson tonight that when God gives us a thorn in the flesh, it's for our good. It is not for our detriment. It's not meaning that God's going to destroy us or God hates us. It's because he loves us and God knows that we have the capability of thinking that we're more than what we are, that we can boast upon ourselves. We think we're boasting on God, but really we're boasting upon ourselves. Amen. How many times have you heard people say, you know, this is what I did in order to overcome uh, my problem. You know, they didn't give God any credit at all. That's why God gave them the problem. And that's why they're still dealing with it. Amen. Whether they rack it or not. They're dealing with it because what God moves in their life, God wants to get the glory. God wants us to give him the glory for the things that he has done in our lives. Amen, somebody. So Paul says uh, to this, unto us, he says, listen. This thing was given to me by God. It was not pushed upon me. It was not, not meant to destroy me, but it was simply given unto me. And don't you let anybody tell you that they know what that thorn in the flesh was. The Bible does not tell us with great clarity what that thorn in the flesh was. We think from some Bible scholars doing research what they think it may be. But Paul does not divulge. He's not sharing. He does not tell us what that thorn in the flesh really is. Amen. To God be the glory. So therefore, Paul says, uh, then let's go on to verse number 8. So for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. Paul says, I prayed unto God three times. Amen. I, I, I pleaded with God three times, that he would take this thing away from me. Amen. But Paul didn't exactly, did exactly what he told others to do in the time of trouble. And what Paul said, in the time of your trouble, you ought to learn how to pray. Amen. Look, nothing beats the power of prayer. Amen. To God be the glory. When you're facing a, a hardship, when you're suffering, when you're struggling, learn how to pray. Pray unto God. Now, God, and Paul is going to remind us that God has different ways of answering our prayers. God sometimes says yes because it aligns with his will. Sometimes he says wait because he wants to teach us uh, a lesson uh, from this experience. Amen. And he wants to give us time to really mature and understand that the the, 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 the deliverance and the healing came from him. And then sometimes God just says, no, you don't need it. You know, what, what, what parent, amen, will give their uh, uh, five-year-old uh, uh, a loaded uh, 22 and to play with? Amen. You wouldn't do that. And God doesn't do that either. Amen. What parent will sit down and uh, give their uh, 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 four-year-old a sharp knife and say, play with it. What, what, what parent will sit down and give uh, their child a box of matches with a gasoline can sitting next to them and say, have fun? Amen. That's not what God does, and, and that's not what God intends to do for us. So Paul simply says he prayed. He prayed unto God that God will remove that thorn in the flesh, that God will take this irritant away from him. Stanford Lucas, thank you so much, my friend, for sharing with us. He said, I pray that God will remove it from me. 
Again, don't forget, we don't know what it was. But Paul says, I prayed three times. Amen. And the Lord did not remove it. Here's what God answered him. Amen. After praying three times, Paul says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory, rather glory in my infirmities, uh, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So what Paul says, I prayed three times, and God said, did not remove it. So that says unto us that, Victoria Silvers, thank you for sharing with us. That says unto us that God sometimes says no. Amen. God hears the prayer, but God says you're not ready to receive it yet. Amen. You're not ready uh, uh, to understand it just yet. You haven't learned the lesson from it just yet. So God says, until you do, I'm not going to remove this irritant. I'm not going to resolve this issue. I'm not going to bring you out of it. I'm going to sustain you in the midst of it, but I'm not going to uh, take it away from you. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, what that simply means unto us is that, that, that sometimes God has to allow us to go through situations and, and trials and troubles uh, to teach us a lesson. Amen. That we might have more confidence in him, that we might have greater faith in him, uh, that, that we might know what's best. Thank you, Valerie, uh, for knowing, sharing God knows what's best for us. That's what it's all about. God knows what's best for us. Amen. And every time he does that, can I say this one more time? He does it for our good. Amen. He does it for our success. He does it for us so that we can learn the lesson from our mistakes and never make those mistakes again. Amen. You see, if you never learn the lesson from your mistakes, you're soon to relive them again. It may not be the next day. It may not be the next year. It may be several years down the road. But if you never learn your lesson, you are open and you are vulnerable enough to commit that same problem uh, again. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. God, God is trying to teach you something. And God is trying to show you something. He's trying to show us something. Amen. It's not just for us. It may be for those that we love so dear and dear. It may be for our family. It may be for our friends. It may be for our church. It may be that God wants to use you. Amen. To, to be a, a living sermon for him. Amen. So that when people see you, they can see how the Lord healed you. They can see how the Lord took uh, the taste of, of, of alcohol from you. How the Lord took the taste of of, of of, of drugs away, how the Lord delivered you uh, from street activity, how the Lord uh, uh, delivered you from a lying tongue. Amen. And God knows in our society today, we need people to be delivered from lying tongues. Amen. I've heard so many lies uh, for this week about so many things, and they know they lie. Amen. Megan King, thank you so much, my friend, uh, for sharing with us tonight. <laughs> Amen. To God be the glory. So Paul says he thought the, sought the Lord through prayer three times. And it also says something else to us about prayer. If God does not respond uh, uh, and, and, and grant you your prayer, it doesn't mean that uh, for us to just stop praying. Amen. There is, there is consistency and there is success in the to be persevering. Amen. God wants us sometimes to see just how much we want it. Uh, how, how bad we want. So just because you pray and say, Lord, heal me and you ain't got well yet, keep on praying. That's what I'm saying. Amen. Don't matter whether you pray one time, two times, three times, a hundred times. Keep on praying. Amen. Janice Braxton, thank you so much for sharing with us this evening. Amen. I just want to let you know the Bible tells us to cease not from praying. Amen. And everything, everything we ought to pray and give God thanks. Amen, somebody. So don't ever stop praying unto the Lord. You may think, well, God didn't answer my prayer yet. Keep on praying. Because what God is doing is trying to get you and I uh, to, to, to humble ourselves, to learn that lesson, and to 100% sell out to him. Amen. To trust him fully for everything that we do and everything that we say. 
Amen. If, I, if you don't hear nothing else that I said tonight, never stop praying. Always pray unto the Lord. You may not get your answer at that moment, and sometimes you will. You may not get it the next day, the next week, the next month, or the next year. But God is going to answer your prayer. Amen. Just be faithful. Be faithful. Now, don't go to God asking for crazy stuff. You know, don't, don't ask God to, to, to kill anybody for you. Don't, don't, don't ask God to, uh, to, to wipe them out. <laughs> Those who were in theological school with me, they understand that, 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 that terminology. Amen. You don't ask God for stuff like that. But here's what you ask God. To change their heart. To touch their heart. To save them. Amen. That they might see the error of their ways and repent. Amen. Listen, when you pray like that, you become such a dangerous person to individuals who are fighting against God. Amen. Amen. You never stop praying. You just turn it over to the Lord and let the Lord uh, work it out. Amen. To God be the glory. So Paul says into this uh, lesson, he says, Therefore I take pleasure in my infirmities and in reproaches in, necess in necessities in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. You see, God wants us to lean and depend and trust in him. And when, he do, when, and when we do, then God will show us our weakness, but he will also reveal unto us his strength. Amen. To God be the glory. So my brothers and sisters, I want to just close this lesson tonight. Uh, before we do our questions and our points, I, I want you to know, that grace is a powerful thing. Grace could meet Paul's need because it was the very strength of God. Grace could meet Paul's need because it was available at all times. Grace could meet Paul's need because it expresses God's acceptance and pleasure in us. And it's the same thing for you and I. All of those things that are about grace, God's grace, is there for us. My grace, God says, not the preacher's grace, not the church's grace, not your friend's grace, but God says his grace is sufficient for us. Grace is the favor and love of God in action. Huh, somebody need to write that down. Grace is the favor and love of God in action. It means he loves you and is pleased with you. Amen. Can you hear it from God? My love is enough for you. That's what God is saying. My love and my grace is enough for you. And God can handle any situation that we find ourselves facing. Amen. He simply says, my grace is sufficient for you. I want to just say to somebody tonight, and I know the people are going through struggling. I know that they are facing uh, what they might think is insurmountable uh, obstacles in their life. But remember what God has just said in this word. My grace is sufficient for you. Amen. If you've suffered loss of loved one, my grace is sufficient for you. If you've suffered loss of employment, my grace is sufficient for you. If you uh, suffered uh, the loss of income, my grace is sufficient for you. If you have lost and suffered anything, just remember God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Here's the thing. His grace is sufficient, but you've got to be willing to allow his grace to uh, avail and be in your life. You've got to yield to him, and you've got to allow him to show you and reveal unto you his grace. You've got to let him show you what he can do. That's all I'm saying. He says, Paul says, that in my weakness, then am I strong. Jackie Wilson, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Stop trying to be so strong for everybody. Amen. And just try not to uh, sit there knowing that the pain is reeking through your body. Uh, the pain is, is, is severe in your body. Uh, you're, you're hurting. You're suffering. You're struggling. Amen. Don't, don't, don't be afraid to humble yourself. Don't be afraid to cry. Don't be afraid to, to acknowledge what you're going through. Amen. Because what Paul says is that when I am weak, when I am weak, then am I strong. We are made strong through uh, the grace of God. 
through the strength of God. God wants us to humble ourselves before him. And then God will pick it up. Amen. And so I preached a sermon a while back. A strength not your own. Amen. That's what we all need to be understanding. That the only way that we can have a strength not our own is to allow the Lord's strength to prevail in our lives and in our situation. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. Paul says, when I am weak, then am I strong. If I were to go out here and try to be Hercules and Superman and Batman and uh, uh, everybody else, I'm just super everything to everybody. I'll never accomplish anything, and I'll never realize and recognize the power of God because I'm looking at my own power. Amen. So we've got to make sure <clears throat> that we yield to the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit and allow God to say to us that my grace is sufficient. That's right, Deacon McNeil. Maintaining a relationship with God is critical in all things. Amen. That's the key right there. Maintaining a relationship with God. Amen. To God be the glory. You know, so many people have given up. Amen. So many people have stopped uh, serving God, worshiping God, trusting God. Amen. But can I let you know, when you get to that point in your life where you just give up on God, amen, you're ready for a fast downward spiral. Amen. To God be the glory. You know, the Bible says, draw near unto me. That's what the Lord says, draw near unto me. Come unto me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden. Come unto me, bring me your problems, bring me your burdens, cast them upon him because he loves you. That's what he says. He wants us to come to him and give it to him fully and totally and then continue to trust in him. Amen. To God be the glory. We've got a couple of questions or points that we want to make tonight and, uh, and then we'll be out of your way. Paul had this thorn in the flesh. You and I have our thorns in the flesh. And I don't know what your thorn may be, but I know what mine is. Amen. And I'm going to be like Paul. Amen. And I'm not going to tell you. You don't need to tell everybody everything. Bingo. Amen, somebody. Stop sharing all your business with everybody and then get upset when everybody know your business. Yeah. Let me move on. Let me move on. To God be the glory. I, I said a mouthful right there. Y'all y'all, y'all, don't want to acknowledge that, but, but that's what you need to do. Uh, you, you need to stop telling everybody everything about your business. Amen. Practical point number one. When God leads believers to boast, it is for his glory and not their own. Amen. We ought to brag on God. Amen. <clears throat> we ought to brag on God. That's right. We need to brag on God and not brag on ourselves. Amen. Point number two, God uses both the highs and the lows in our lives in our ministry to others. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> sometimes we're up, sometimes we're down. Sometimes we, we are uh, uh, successful, sometimes we're not successful. But everything that happens in your life, God can use it for his glory. You've got a testimony to share, and you ought to be willing to share your testimony with other individuals. Amen. Not what you have done, but what the Lord has done for you. Amen. Point number three, God's goodness speaks for itself without any need of us to boast. Amen. Amen. We don't, if you're going to brag about anything, brag on God. Amen. Don't, don't boast upon yourself. Don't, don't brag on yourself, but boast on the power of God. Amen. Point number four, without trials, believers will forget to rely on God. If you never had any pain, if you've never been sick, why would you need a doctor? Amen. You forget all about doctors. But here it is. It says in our lesson, without pain, without trials and tribulations, we would forget all about God because I'm just living life to its fullest. Everything is wonderful. Listen, nobody <clears throat> comes into this world and, and it's like a marriage. Get married and live happily ever after. Amen. I have never seen a marriage that lives ha happily ever after. Amen. I've never seen it because every marriage has problems. Every relationship has difficulty. Amen. So all of this happily ever after stuff, you know, you need to forget about those fairy tale things. Wanda Hayes, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. It's good to see you again. 
Unto God be the glory. I know your brother's watching and he's just happy that your name is there. To God be the glory. My brothers and sisters, we need to make sure that we understand that, that life is life. And if you live life, you're going to have trials and tribulations. But here's the thing. God is there. He's a constant friend, a constant companion that will be as close as a brother, that will be there for you, that will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be there until the very end. Amen. So we're going to have trials and tribulations, which teaches us how to rely on God. Point number five, persistent prayer demonstrates faith in the midst of trial. As I said before, don't ever stop praying. Amen. Whatever you do, keep on praying. Keep on praying. Your healing may not have come yet, but keep on praying. Uh, your deliverance may not have happened yet, but keep on praying. Amen. That job, that success has not come yet, but keep on praying. Keep on praying unto the Lord. Antonio Monday, God bless your heart. Thank you for sharing in with us tonight. And we are so sorry to hear about your loss and the loss of your mother. And we will be uh, praying for you. And after this broadcast, uh, I will be calling you. Amen. To God be the glory. But thank you so much, Tonio. You've always been uh, very special to us. You've always uh, been such a wonderful individual. And uh, we're just excited of what God's doing in your life and what he will be doing in your life. So we're praying for you, Antonio. And I will be calling you right after uh, this program tonight. <laughs> Point number six. God wants his people to minister to his power, not to their own strength. Amen. If you are leaning on your strength more than you are leaning on the power of God, you're going to be defeated. Amen. Because the devil has strength also. The devil has power also. Amen. But we are so grateful and we're so thankful that we know that God has all power. Amen. To God has all power. Point number seven. God's light shines brightest in a believer when his own light must faint. Amen. In other words, Paul says, uh, the, the scripture says, I must decrease. Jesus says, I must decrease. Uh, I'm sorry. John the Baptist says, I must decrease that thou may increase. Amen. So we must allow ourselves to be humbled so that God can have the preeminence in our lives. Amen. God wants to be number one in all of our lives, all of our doing and all of our ways. Amen. To God be the glory. So don't forget, just because, just like Paul had thorn in the flesh, you and I, we're going to have a thorn in the flesh. We're going to have to deal with pain. We're going to have to deal with suffering. We're going to have to deal with sorrow. We're going to have to deal with all of those things just as Paul had to deal with them. But Paul says this unto us, and don't you ever forget this. God is speaking to you tonight, and God is simply saying that my grace is sufficient for you. My favor, my blessing is sufficient for you. Amen. To God be the glory. Well, my brothers and sisters, that's our lesson for the night. And we pray and we hope and we trust that you have enjoyed the lesson tonight. And we're going to continue to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to continue to allow him to have the preeminence in our lives. We're going to allow him to just uh, 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 have his way with us uh, as he desires. Amen. So if you desire to be a blessing to this ministry, if you desire to be a blessing unto the Lord, I want you to know that there are ways that you can be a blessing. First of all, if you have your iPhone, if you have an iPad or whatever a medium you might have, I want you to search for uh, the app called Givelify. Amen. And when you find the app called Givelify, I want you to search for Fourth Baptist Church. 726 South Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. And when you search for that, and a picture of the church will come up. It's a picture with all the glass in front of the church. Beautiful church. Amen. I just marvel sometimes about what the Lord has done and how the Lord has done. Along with the picture of the church will come up my picture as well, just to make sure that you have the right church. Tap on that. And it will ask you, how much do you want to bless the Lord with? Amen. You can enter in the amount that you want to bless the Lord. Amen. And then tap on that. And you have given unto the Lord. You have blessed the Lord. Amen. 
if ever there was a time that is needful and necessary in the lives of all churches. Amen. With the COVID being out there and, and people are not coming to church on a regular basis, uh, and we understand why, because of the COVID. But nonetheless, uh, we, we should still continue to be a blessing unto the Lord and the house of, of the Lord. Amen. Don't forget, just because you can't come to church doesn't mean that you cannot give. Amen. To God be the glory. If you want to do that, uh, give that way, fine. Also, you can give a different way, and that is by writing a check, addressing it to Fourth Baptist Church, 726 South Street, uh, Port Smith, Virginia, 23704. Slip it in the mail, and we will gladly receive it and thank God for uh, the blessing. Or you can come by the church. Amen. And drop it off at the church. However you desire, you ought to be a blessing unto the Lord. Why? Because the Lord has already blessed you. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. Again, thank you so much, my brothers and sisters, for sharing with us tonight. We praise God for your presence, and we ask that you will continue uh, to pray for us as we go along the way. Don't forget, this coming Saturday, we have the homegoing services uh, for Sister Brenda uh, Hickson at 11 a.m. We're asking the members of Fourth Baptist uh, to come and support uh, the family, pray for the family. Uh, we need ushers and all to be there on duty uh, that we might serve this family. That's Brenda Hickson uh, at 11 a.m. this coming Saturday morning. And then we shall gather again on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our Sunday morning worship experience and our Sunday morning worship service. Join us then. Amen. And we will be glad that you're there. We pray that you will be blessed. And as soon as we get the details about uh, Felicia Monday, we will let you know. Fourth Baptist, amen. We will let you know. To God be the glory. Until then, be blessed. But before we go, let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, as we come today, we're so grateful and thankful for the lesson that you've given unto us tonight, the inspiration uh, that you provided for us, and the encouragement uh, along the way. Thank you, dear God, for speaking to your people, uh, encouraging your people, comforting your people, soothing your people, dear God, strengthening your people along the way. Thank you for reminding us that your grace is sufficient for us. So, Father God, we ask thy blessings now. We bless, ask thy blessing, Father God, especially upon Antonio Monday. We pray, Father God, for his strength. We pray for his, uh, his, his, his spiritual uh, 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 strength. And we pray, Father God, that you would just comfort him now. Uh, alleviate all of his fears and all of his anxieties and allow him to know, dear God, that your grace, even in this, is sufficient for him. We pray, Father God, that you would sustain him right now. Lift them up and hold them up, dear God, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Until we meet again, dear God, bless your people. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Until we meet again on Saturday or Sunday, we pray, my, father, my brothers and sisters, that you would be encouraged that you will be blessed and that you will be strengthened to know that God's grace is sufficient for you. Beverly Shelton, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Good night, my friends, my brothers and my sisters. Until we meet again, God bless you, God keep you, God sustain you along the way. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters, and good night to each and every one of you. God bless you and good night.